So a lot of people know that what I like to do is I like to, at the end of the show, in most shows, uh, react to a content creator and give them hopefully some visibility and then also give my thoughts on whether or not I think that they're doing it the right way or if they're doing it the wrong way. This content creator's name is The Fading Man. The fate. Look at that dramatic. That dramatic man. Look at that boy. He said, I'm working on my thumbnails, getting it in. Fading Man has 1,600 subscribers, 1,600 subscribers. He putting some work in. We got to show love to our content creators. So make sure that if y'all wind up going over to his channel and showing him some love, make sure you let him know the dance time from Anton Daniel sent you. And the name of the video is, video is called Getting Laid Off at 55 Years Old and Fighting Depression. And he did him a nice, he did one of these. I like that. I like the effort that you're putting in. You got this and it's fading out and you got the, the filter on there and you, oh my God. And you got the camera up and you took the picture like this. He did one of these. He said, he said. <laughs> Shout out to the fade, man. I like that. I like the effort that you got going on over there, fade, man. All right. So we're going to get into this video. I have not watched it yet. Uh, but he's basically talking about being 55 years old and getting laid off and then depression setting in. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, and then also make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Let's rock. Hello, folks. So I am 55 years old, and for the last almost six months, I've been laid off. And... I'm starting to feel a little bit worried because I still don't have a job. Mm. But more than that, I'm feeling embarrassed and I'm feeling stupid. Um, stupid for staying at a job for 12 years with a company that I knew laid off all the time. Um, when I first got the job at this company, right away, I knew that there were layoffs. I saw layoffs all around me. And for 12 years, I probably witnessed 25 different layoffs. Mm. And I still stayed with the company. All right. So, first of all, you know what you got yourself into. And you got every single thing that you can get out of this company. Meaning that he went into it with his eyes wide open. He wasn't surprised. There was nothing that he didn't expect. When he first got the job 12 years ago, yes, yes, I do detect some of that too, Mark Coleman, but we're not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the money. He went into it with his eyes wide open, meaning that he got the job and he knew that it was a possibility that he can get laid off, but he ran the bag up and he was being successful, which means that if you first get into that situation, ship, then you know not to ever depend on that job in order for you to get a mortgage. You know not to depend on that job in order to pay your car note. That job was supposed to be a temporary stop for a permanent solution. Maybe a career change, maybe growth, any of that stuff, right? But he did like a lot of us do in society, and it's not to his, you know, we're not going to talk negatively about it because we want him to come out at whatever negative space that he's in, but he did what a lot of us did, and we start to put our faith and what we've consistently seen over a period of time, and it all could be upended in one moment, in the snap of a finger. And so instead of him using this as an opportunity in order to level up and go to the next level, he allowed for it to basically hamstringing, crippling, and then not continue to progress. I'm never, ever, under any circumstances, ever going to put my faith in an organization. I'm going to put my faith in myself. And so I'm banking on me. I'm banking 100% on me. Everything that I get from them is extra. And if everything goes phenomenal, that's, that's more than I ever expected. But at the same time, I'm continuing to progress. I'm continuing to level up. I even tell people inside of the bag chasers, hey, listen, by three years, and I know it's some people that tell you all to job hop sooner than that, but I don't believe in that because three years allows for you the time for you to be, really build relationships, uh, for you to have growth, make a decent amount of money, get some projects under your belt. And then also show some consistency within the workspace or within the career path that you in that you're not just the type of person that's going to leave after a year, but you're the type of person that sticks around long enough in order for you to actually have some accomplishments 
And then ultimately you move on to greater things, whether you get promoted in a company. But at, at the three-year mark, before the three-year mark, you should start getting curious. Regardless of how far up you go in a company, at the three-year mark, you should get curious because companies will pay you to leave. They will pay you more to leave than for you to stay. Now, that don't mean that you shouldn't also be leveling up in a company, but at the same time, two things can be true at the same time. By the four-year mark, you should be full stride going into your next position. Four-year mark, unless you are 100% at the top or you in a space to where it's just extra and you just getting that bag extra and you already got something else going on on the side, at the four-year mark, you should be already gone. So he was there for 12 years, even though he witnessed this thing playing out the way that it had been playing out over 25 layoffs since he'd been there. So he should have been already girded up and ready. Shouldn't even have been there for 12 years. And I, and I knew that there was a great chance that I was going to get laid off especially the last year because uh, I basically ran out of work and oh he knew it was gonna come off somebody from my team the year before for the basically the same reason and it seems like they're they were trying to weed out our team and also yep. we got new management and you should have been out of there ASAP those those new managers didn't care about us at all they they never had our back and I work for a company the now we starting to get into the excuses. You knew that you ran out of work. You were not new. You were no longer adding value into the company. You seen a guy last year get laid off for the same thing. You seen 25 layoffs happen before, 25 layoff rounds over the last 12 years. So basically a layoff round every six months. But now we starting to lean into the victim Olympics and saying, well, the management didn't care about us. You knew. You already said that you knew that this was going to happen. So why are we now starting to play the victim and blame it on management? You knew that this was going to happen. You should have been girded up and, and already had your LinkedIn ready, updating your profile, resume writers, investing in yourself, getting in shape, getting your, your, your social media profiles together so that you can market yourself more effectively and all of that. You should have already been in full stride, bro. That you're just a number at this company. They lay, lay off anybody it doesn't matter if you're a vp for some reason y'all think that somebody manager, owe y'all something a supervisor a low life they they lay everybody off they're constantly reorganizing and laying people off and they just they don't care how it affects your life so um i knew that and i never found another job and i don't know why i i just rolled the dice I, I, I also saw that successful people at the company moved around. Like they, they got different jobs. They didn't stay in the same oh, place. Oh, he knew for, all the things uh, to do. 12 years like I did. I was in the same position, same department, did the same job for 12 years at that company. So he's telling you out of his mouth, the successful people in the company, they continue to grow. They move around. They don't stick. They stay in one place. He was the one anomaly, the needle in the haystack that was able to get as much money as he possibly can doing the same thing without any kind of growth, and he expected for them to keep him. Ain't no loyalty. Company, I never moved around once. Um, but, um, and I, when I, and my friends who were, who I started out with, the, the people that I were close with were already laid off before I was laid off. They didn't really move around that much. So um, the people that seem to, you know, be able to stay at this company and move around or they know somebody high up. Um, and, you know, I didn't. So um, I knew that I should be um, leaving that company. I, I kept complaining to my family for like five years. You know, I'm going to get laid off from this place. I'm going to get laid off from this place. I'm going to get laid off from this place, you know. And they were like, Five oh, no, years. you're not. No, you're not. I was like, you do not know this company. <laughs> you know, and I still didn't leave. So now I feel really stupid. And, you know, I, th and every, but when I first got laid off, I thought, well, I heard, you know, everybody told me, well, they can't keep people in positions. You know, um, hiring managers can't find people to hire, you know. You'll find a job easily, blah, 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 blah. Well, lazy. First of all, when they laid, me off, lazy. they laid me off in December. Lazy. So that's a terrible time to be laid off for a job. Um, so for the first um, 
Lazy as hell. Few months, like from December to um, March, basically, I hardly had um, any feedback on my um, resumes that I sent out. Uh, people weren't hiring at all. They don't really hire at that time of year. It was only um, in March, really, that things started to pick up. And then I, I, I had some bad luck on interviews. Um, <laughs> Yo, the level of lack of accountability in this video is incredible. All right, let me remix that. I'm going to play it again for y'all real slow, and then we're going to go from there. And again, I my first time watching, I'm re reacting to it. I'm giving you my authentic thoughts. Uh, make sure y'all go and check out his channel, The Fading Man, and let him know that I sent you. This is what he said. Listen. I, I, I had some bad luck on interviews. Translation. I didn't know what I was talking about when I went into the interview. I wasn't prepared. I didn't do no research on a position. I've been stagnant the whole time. I don't have no skill set that I've been continuously improving upon. I interviewed bad. I came in. I wasn't, I didn't give a good presentation. I fumbled. I knew I wasn't getting a job. I got some interviews. I got some shots. And it was no way I was getting a job because I was trash on that interview. That's what it means. That's that's the translation. Ain't no such thing as bad luck on an interview. There is no such thing, in my personal opinion, as bad luck on an interview. It's I I don't even remember the last time that I had a bad interview. I was not sufficient enough for the position that I was going for. I was over there fumbling. They told me that I was talking stupid and I was you should have watched the interview like a king video on the Patreon. You should have watched the inter is a, it, listen, it's a video on the Patreon called Interview Like a King. You watch that video before you go on an interview. I'm not gonna guarantee you that you're gonna get it, but it's a very, very, very good chance that you're gonna get the job if you watching that video and you implement everything that I tell you in that video inside of the bag chasers there's so many gems in there make sure y'all tap into the patreon link is in the description let's continue um there were jobs that i thought that i was going to get and basically they told me i had and i didn't get them and i don't i still don't understand why but now i'm in the situation of being 55 years old and not having a job and right when people were about ready to retire and and so people retire at 55 years old when Hop or win. I make a crazy amount of money and I throw a whole lot of money into assets and I very much expect to be working past 55 years old. It's just productive. If y'all have ever watched the, uh, the video on Netflix about the people that live the longest over there in Japan and Okinawa and all across the world, they stay physically productive for the entire time and that's one of the things that give them life. So, all Shout I out to Visa. Busy. I'm going to read that super chat um, shortly. That I can work at until I'm like 67 and then retire. But I and but I don't know when that's going to happen. <laughs> you know, so I'm stuck in this really weird position and I'm really starting to get depressed. So um, the longer I'm laid off, the more depressing it gets. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Shout out to Khalid King. Cause so, good luck on that uh, interview. You, you know, I've tried talking to people and stuff like that about my feelings and stuff like that and it's just there's nothing they can't help me the only thing that can help me is having a job i'm somebody who likes to work i like to get out and meet people and yet i'm stuck in this position so i guess this is just a really really bad time in my life and hopefully it's a, the last big obstacle i have hopefully the next time i find a job it's going to be one that you know lasts forever um a job that I can retire from, but right See, now he's still he's still on it. He want another twelve years, fifty five. He want to retire at sixty seven. He want another position where he can go in and lay around and try to figure it out for the next twelve years. And a lot of these people is just they 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 work in a retire. That's ultimately what it comes back down to, bro. I'm, I'm really just feeling embarrassed uh, and um, stupid, and just really starting to get depressed. So. I just can't believe I'm this old and I find myself at this, in this position. And, you know, I tried doing the right thing. Uh, before I had this job, I had another job and I had 13 seniorities, 
years of seniority at that job. And I was laid off from that job because of outsourcing. They outsourced my job to India, <laughs> you know? And so now I find myself in this situation. So, you know, it sucks. And uh, I'm, I'm going through it day by day, but I just can't believe it's taking this long. But um, anyway, if you like my story, Anyways, make sure y'all go and check him out. Tell him that I sent you if you're interested in subscribing to his content. But, man, listen, man. Y'all got to have a level of enthusiasm and you got to have good energy and you can't wait for somebody to give you something. And he's too old to still be thinking like this and he should understand exactly what goes along with it. But a lot of these people are just waiting to be able to get Social Security and a pension and sit around all day and scratch their balls and not necessarily be productive members of society. This is silly. Depression comes from, it's a mindset for what success is supposed to look like. Whenever I've ever lost something, I got excited about the possibilities of what if right after that. Anyways. Uh